Dear young friends, dear brothers and sisters, the state of the world is always chaotic. So is the time in which we live. Chaos of non-values, as if too often no one is punished for telling a lie. But people are punished if they tell the truth. So-called woke culture aggressively demolishes and says it is enough to create opponents in order to have followers. But it is enough to be against someone to have someone else to follow you. Science, which in the last two centuries has been placed on the pedestal of everything, has become more and more the servant of the servant of politics and thus confuses people a great number. We felt it well, especially during the last three years. And even what was supposed to be followed, the trace of the truth, follows the trace of politics. In the democracies that we live in today, truth is often determined by the majority of votes, and the majority of votes is determined by the strength of interests. That is why everyone has his own truth. Then you have to really do a great research to reach the truth. The world we live in today is filled with misinformation. It is up to each of you to serve as judges, distinguishing truth from falsehood. It was recently said by John Clauser, Nobel Prize winner in physics, last year, 2022. Even these days, he's banned to talk. Yes, dear friends, it is the stage of the world where we also spend our days and ask ourselves, what about us? What about us, Christians, who are baptized in the name of the one who defines and determines the history? What about us who profess faith in Christ the Savior, Christ of love, Christ of truth? Tonight, together with you, I would like to think about Him. The world has always been in chaos and always will be in chaos. That is the nature of the world. But we ask ourselves, what about ourselves? Christ, who talks and acts in the very person of God when He says, You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, but I say to you, or heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Or, I mean, Jesus Christ is the most beautiful and noble gift of humanity. There is nothing a, a poet said better than that, to know that man who redeems the sins of other people with his suffering, that is the most wonderful moral image of the human race, and it has remained clear and pure, regardless of all the deviations of Christianity and Christians. He remains the event of the truth, and he remains 
as eternity. So we ask ourselves, who is that? If he is like that, then I should get to know him in my life. And I should ask myself, what is he like? We have to get to know him. An unknown author from the 19th century says something like this. He was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. He grew up in another obscure village where he worked in a carpenter's shop. He never traveled 200 miles away from the place where he was born. He did none of the things that usually accompany greatness. While he was still a young man, the tide of popular opinion turned against him. His friends deserted him at the most important moment or time of his life. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, his executioners gambled for the only piece of property he had, his cloak. And when he was dead, thanks to the kindness of his friends, he was taken down and laid in a borrowed grave. Twenty centuries have come and gone, and today he is the central figure for much of the human race. All the armies that have ever marched, and all the navies that ever sailed, and all the parliaments that ever sat, and all the kings that have ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of man upon this earth as powerfully as this one did, the only one, the life of Jesus of Nazareth. More texts have been written about him than about anyone else in the history of human existence. No one who meets him with soul stays the same. No one has ever put as much faith in an ordinary lowly man as Jesus of Nazareth did. He who spoke then, he's speaking today to them then and to us here, to those far away and to, and to us who are close here. That Nazarene told us that being lowly, ordinary, humble means being great. He did not choose influential people of his time as his preachers, but ordinary, lowly. They were fishermen and peasants, ordinary people, but with the power of His Spirit they went around the world, pagan world, hostile, preaching the good news, the only dimension of our life for which it is worthy to walk for, and that is love. To that Jesus of Nazareth, sometimes poets serve him better than preachers. Those who know him always serve him the best. Paul, a Jew and a saint, a rebel and a preacher, the one who met Christ and then understood who he was, tells us, us and to all generations, he, Christ, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Because of this, and therefore God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Christ is Lord. Yes, dear friends, He is the one before whom we bend our knees, and only before Him. When we adore Him, then 
we do not adore adore nothing and no one else and opposite is truth when we adore someone else and everything then we do not adore him we cannot sit on two chairs he told us that nothing and no one is above love love is the supreme low the meaning of existence following Christ means loving and never never judging love forgives heals lifts up and creates and even when we are in doubt when we do not know where to go what decision to make when we are at the crossroads choosing love we can never make mistake it overcomes indifference and despair love is beauty itself beauty of the world only love can save the world again as Paul says love never fails according to it and because of it Christ teaches us that every saint has a past no matter what it's like but that every every sinner has a future that is his ordinary but magnificent testament he told us dear friends that great realities great encounters great thoughts great divine in man happen in the silence of the unknown far from the glitter of the world that Jesus of Nazareth he could walk on water the gospel tells us but he only did it once he didn't like spectacles he was born in flesh and rose from that flesh quietly far from the stage of this world that almost no one saw it he told us dear friends unlike all the philosophers of the East and the West who have been searching for the truth for centuries and they wrote tons of volumes of books and different versions of it but he himself says that he is the truth in other words get to know me and you will find the truth as the wise man said no truth is worth an effort except that which strives for love if he says that love that he is love then it perfectly makes sense that is why those who love themselves more than the truth do not become his friends thus Judas was not the last person to betray him and certainly not the most famous one and he truly is the beginning and the meaning of the word truth that Nazarene told us to meet him in the needy the poor the rejected the strange man of this world those that no one wants to speak with or spend time with and therefore since we cannot give directly to him he authorized the poor as recipients of his gifts they became his ambassadors his face through entire world in such a way they become to us our mother and brothers 
in the needy he became recognizable, visible in every place and in every nation, every people. He constantly asks ask his six questions, which are the basis of physical and spiritual acts of love, saying, I was hungry, I was thirsty, I was naked, I was a stranger, I was ill, and I was in prison. Did you help me? Dear friend, when was it last time when someone was hungry, thirsty, naked, stranger, ill, or in prison? All these six types of the needy have one common characteristic. They are all alone. So I'm asking you, when was the last time you helped someone in their loneliness? The answer to these six questions of our Lord Jesus is the answer to the question, do the two of us know each other? He has sent his mother so many times to help us. From Bethlehem and Cana of Galilee to this place here between these two hills. If we get to know her, we will get to know him as well. As a loving mother, she persistently asks and even annoys, but not for her sake, but for his sake from Cana to today, not because of herself, but because of Him. Dear friends, that Nazarene is called King, Lord, Rabbi, Friend, Man of Suffering, Philosopher, Savior. He is a different strength to different people, but most often they call Him by one name teacher. The Gospels, most often the word teacher is mentioned. He's our teacher. So we ask ourselves today, who is he to you, my friend? He promised to his disciples three things. They would be completely fearless absolutely happy and in constant trouble. When you become his friend in this world, often you will experience loneliness and hell. So I'm asking you, are you ready to get to know him? He preached about the kingdom of God and told us to change our lives in order to become members of this kingdom. Then we also can say, as the motto of this youth fast reads, here is my mother, here are my mother and my brothers and my sisters. I would also like to be part of the kingdom. Because he came to make or to turn bad people into good and good people holy. So I have to ask myself tonight, am I bad? Am I good? Or do I desire to be holy? Dear young friends, we also have only one life, just one dash so to say, between birth and death, arrival and departure. Question of all questions. The meaning of all meanings. Question of all philosophies and all spiritualities is how to live the one and only 
life we have. Christ is our teacher. And let us choose Him and no one else. What was never clear before, in that case, will become clear to us. We will find meaning that does not exist anywhere else. Love will become our way and life. We will be granted, as He tells us today, knowledge of the mysteries of the Kingdom of Heaven. It will be that is enough for one only and glorious life. But all of that only with Him and through Him. That is why I am kindly asking you, let us choose Him. Do not allow spirituality to become formality or tradition, to become some kind of religion of centuries without encounters. Let us permit ourselves to have this encounter, that encounter change history, and it can change me and you. At the end, I'm kindly asking of you, my dear young friends, when you go home these days, you will go back into the chaos of this world. They don't love you because you're Catholics, or they don't love you because you're Christians. They don't love you because you are pro-family and for pro-marriage, for values that remain and worth. They don't love you because of millions of things that you stand behind and for. But that is why be thankful. When they tremble over you, stand up. When they attack you, say, Christ, I would still go with you. Why not? Choice is clear. If we choose Him, we will choose what always remains forever. In this world and in that world, we will choose what only makes sense and has a meaning. We will choose what can only give happiness without endless happiness of human heart. We will choose what is His only commandment. We will choose love. Against it, no one can do anything to you. Choose Him. Amen. Amen.